One Circuit Mailbag, coming to you live from downtown Tasmania. One Circuit, loved by 33.75% of people who enjoy statistics. The Season of Light Packages, which has... Oh, oh one more. Unless you sort of check that. Which has some sort of measuring, but what is it measuring? Hmm, let's grab it out and have a look. I want to say temperature, but um, I'll check. LM75A, temperature, little chip there. It uh, looks like, um, what have we got? A SOP8. Uh, it doesn't look like small enough to be SSOP. And uh, communication via I squared C. And we've got VCC ground, SDA, SCL, and what on earth is DS? That's weird. I uh, have to check that out to see what that last one is for. But, um, yeah, I think that's what these guys are about. High speed, I think they're... Um, OSDS looks like OS no idea uh, I'll put up what I know uh, here anyway and uh, at some stage in the future we'll hook these guys up and uh, and see what they do I'm pretty interested in sort of I, I guess sensors that don't use an awful lot of juice and communicate fairly easily so that's what this is about turn it on quickly get the temperature turn it off and uh, and so hopefully we'll see this again Firstly, to do a little bit of experimentation, but then ultimately maybe in some of the little uh, temperature projects that I've got around the place. Okie dokie. And we have many things. Hmm. I would say these are little time keepers. Uh, RTCs, real-time clock. You've got your... CR2032 battery uh, back up on the uh, on the rear side and on the front side and there's a crystal there probably 32 kilohertz I want to say um, let's get a look closer and see what else is there DS 1307Z so that would be something to do with the uh, timing for sure on the other side, I'm not sure. It looks like ATHYC932, 24C32N. Makes me think maybe EEPROM for, uh, so maybe you would program the time through that and it would be stored in that if there's a power outage, maybe battery backup. Hard to say. Nice little units. And uh, I'm going to make sure I get this one hooked up in a video soon so we can see how to communicate with it. And, uh, and where it could be useful. Lighty McLightface. What does it contain though? Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> what is that? Wow. Don't know. Something that you plug into a USB and then it's got some chips on it. Definitely need to get right in close to that one. No name chip on the top and I'm not sure what that guy is either can't quite make out a what is it two two three eight Ooh, okay and what else have we got here y1 which I think is a transistor okay I don't know what this is and uh, I guess the only way to find out Oh, it's got LEDs on the back, so it's probably going to light up. Let's try it. And nothing happened. Oh, wait a minute. Something does happen. Yeah, let's kill the lights and see. Mm, not much of a disco going on. Oh. I do see. Do we have a button over here that we can change this? Or is it just doing its own thing? I think it's just doing its own thing. I wonder if the other one's the same. Let's have a look. 
Not hugely exciting. What about this guy? I wonder if it matters which way you plug it in. Yeah, it seems to be the same sequence. I cannot see a way of interacting with this at all. Let's plug it in the other way. Yeah, it started off green before, whether that makes a difference or not. Pretty boring disco, I'd have to say. Sorry. <laughs> Just blue. Oh dear. Maybe it's in response to something. Oh, yes. Look at that. It's a touch switch. Wow, that took a little while to figure out. It's a touch switch on the end. Sorry, those people who are screaming at the uh, at their screens at the moment. Um, let's get some more lights off here so we can see this a bit better. There we go. That's nice. And then if I touch it, look at that. That makes sense. It's a touch guy. Oh, you really can't see what's going on. Let me just uh, adjust for the lighting if I can. It's not keen. Maybe I do need a little bit of light on to see what's going on. That's awful. Flaring, and that's flaring even more. Apologies. It's really hard to get the... Uh, no, that's not too bad. You can sort of see what's going on and touch it. And touch it. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's a bit cooler than I thought. Many, many modes. I'm not sure how many modes. I'll look that up and, and put that here. But uh, not that that was pretty useless, but now it sort of makes sense. It's a bit of a party trick, I guess. Uh, why you'd want that, I'm not sure. But uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool. In the end, pretty cool. Nice one. It's substantial and inside. Oh, is a lighting strip. Okay, bit of a theme. All right, let's have a look at it. So, yeah, interesting, quite flexible, which is good. So, you could, and quite long too. Um, so, you could put that, you know, attached to, well, in this case. Um, the frame that hold, is holding up the camera above the uh, the board here. Let's plug this one in and see what we can get. Five volts, I'm assuming. And then turn it on. Just on and off. Yeah, nice. All right, so uh, let's see. We've been doing this a bit lately, but let's do it again. So we've got our 555 timery guy signal generator just sitting here and we have normal lighting let's just focus focus there we go normal lighting and then we bring in the shadow dispeller yeah we can wrap it around a bit all sides too which is nice yeah i like that that's pretty good and it's it's a bit tricky to uh it's got a strip on the back that you can pull off and attach it, but otherwise it's sort of writhing around a little bit, so it will need to be attached because although you're getting better lighting there, I'm actually seeing it reflecting back to me as it twists around. That's not bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. So let's go no lighting and, well, not no lighting, but old lighting and new lighting. Pretty good. Up high, down low. Yeah, I think that'll be a nice addition as well. So uh, many different options to uh, improve the lighting and it's all for you viewers of this channel. <laughs> well, it's not that I don't like LEDs. There you go. Hmm. Interesting shapes in there. Let's have a look. Aha, very interesting indeed. So I did um, think about dispersion of light when I ordered these. So these are little lenses and the idea is that you put your um, LED cob inside here and it sort of throws the light a bit wider. Shall we give it a try? Well they look pretty much the same to the uh, to the naked eye. Hmm. So let's have a look. What do we got? We've got 8.2 
volts coming in, um, 17 milliamps drawn with both of these. Uh, I might try the voltage up a little bit actually, so let's just pump that guy up. Uh, oh, dodgy connection. Not sure that's going to make a huge difference, but let's just get it up to nine. There we go. This connection here is a bit iffy. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, not much of a difference. Uh, anyway, we'll pop this thing on and see if that changes it. And I'm not sure we're going to be noticing anything either, but anyway, we'll see how we go. So it just pops into here. Good fit. I'm actually thinking, apart from dispersing the light, um, you know, it's it could have some sort of weather protection as well. So let's see what that does to it. Yeah, can't really tell it there's any difference. Um, yeah, that's a bit of an annoying connection. I'm going to have to fix it, I think. Oh, yeah, look at that. So there is a bit of a difference there. I can't really see that with the naked eye from my angle, but the camera is definitely picking up a greater dispersion. I will flip these upside down and turn the lights off and uh, that might reveal even more. Now I'm not sure that the camera is picking out what the eyes see so I've drawn it with uh, a little bit of pencil here but this is definitely throwing the light a bit wider and um, I don't know it's sort of concentrating it somehow too. So I think a couple of benefits here knowing how the light's going to come out in a controlled fashion is definitely a good thing. But the second thing is a bit of weatherproofing as well. So I think they're a good pickup and they'll be useful, um, you know, for some projects. Okay. This one. Aha! A bit of a theme. Uh, okay, so these are also mm, caps for little lights to throw them wider. 13 mil, 100 degrees it says. Okay, so uh, one way of finding that out and that is to uh, throw that experiment back in again. Not much showing to the naked eye. There is a very satisfying snap when you put the bulbs in. So they've sort of got some uh, tension there that when you actually snap it in, uh, it stays. So I don't know that that guy's coming out in a hurry really after having been put in there. But um, as to how it affects the throw of the light, I think we'll have to do the thing again side by side with a bit of paper and see what it looks like. So again, uh, quite a change in how the dispersion of the light is. Uh, this is the naked one here, and this is the one with just this little sort of snap-on cap uh, lens. I, I guess, uh, well, what I'll do is I'll put them uh, side by side so we can see what it looks like to have the fully enclosed version versus this sort of uh, smaller version versus a naked bulb and uh, also the interesting thing though I think is that both of the uh, caps that I've got the lenses that I've got are transparent I'd be interested in one which is slightly opaque I think uh, because not only would it sort of throw the light sideways better but um, I think if you're looking at maybe a console or something from a distance it'll be easy to see. I often find looking at uh, LEDs on projects from a distance that they all sort of merge a little bit together. For me it's a bit hard to see but maybe something that's a bit opaque might help. But yeah very interesting little items those. And in here we have couple of SD cards. So yes, I've been, uh, um, I guess, playing around a little bit more with Orange Pi variations lately. And uh, yeah, just looking at SD cards that will be suitable to go in. And uh, so you put the operating system on the card and then that goes into an SD card slot on the device itself. And uh, these just these ones are a couple of 16 gigabyte ones, supposedly. Um, I always go for the sellers that have sold a lot and the reviews are good because you know there are some stories of um of sd cards out there and even full hard drives uh, which are advertised at a very um, good price for a large amount of capacity which turn out to be not so much but um anyway i'll test these and get back to you if they are faulty all right bit of a light one containing 
<laughs> Snap. What? Okay. So in this case, I've actually got <laughs> two separate suppliers, a bit of redundancy going on. So there's also, okay, so there's a bit of a trick here too. If this is an AliExpress uh, seller and uh, often what I do is I'll select a seller and then I will select the method of delivery and it's sort of free, free, and then it kicks over. So obviously this kicked over between two items and three items and coming from China to Australia, even at the lowest rate, it's sort of around five or six dollars, which is, you know, sometimes as much, if not more than the price of the items themselves. So two suppliers, two separate suppliers, um, selecting just enough to be underneath the trigger for a higher price for the freight and uh, and arriving at the same time. So happy days for everyone. I'll test these guys and get back to you as well. Okie dokie. Let's see what we have here. We've got, ooh, some little LEDs listed as three watt and natural white with a forward voltage of 3.4 to 3.6, a current of 700 milliamps. Definitely need to fire those up and see what they look like. Yeah, pretty clear the difference between warm white on the left-hand side and natural white on the right hand side. I think I'm leaning towards the natural light versions because they have uses in a couple of different um, circumstances. So it is a warmish light. I find the, the cold white uh, just too harsh, uh, but the warm white can sometimes not provide just enough lighting. It sort of tends more towards the yellow. So that's the natural white, 450K uh, on the spectrum. Yeah, good get. Okay, and inside, LED cobs, 7 watt, 400k, so tending towards the more uh, natural of the white, and I was wondering about um, maybe changing or boosting the light from the guys that have come up from here and here, so I did a video well, quite some time ago now about putting light onto this bench, so I'll link that up. But uh, I just grabbed the 7 watt cobs that I had at the time, didn't really think about the, the colour temperature of them, and, uh, and then just saw these uh, late one night, as is usually the case, and thought, well, I'll, um, I'll maybe uh, have a look at these as a comparison. Um, I'm not sure that we would see that on the screen, but um, let's give it a try. So I'll just put this... Uh, solder one up and then just see if it is a different color to what we're seeing here which I think is actually quite a, a white light as opposed to more of a natural or a warm white. First part of the mission soldering up let's turn it on I think I've got it at 21 volts and yeah that's uh, that's pretty bright not sure what the camera is picking up but <laughs> that's pretty bright um, I'm going to actually maybe put it on its side and put it on paper and see if it varies anything to the light that's coming out of it. It actually looks pretty similar. Yeah, not picking up too many differences at this stage with the, the spectrum of light coming out from the, uh, the ones on the side here, the lamps on the side that I built all that time ago versus these ones. But it is a lovely... Uh, it is a lovely colour, so um, I think they'll be a good addition for the future lighting of many areas, who knows. That is the mailbag for the week, and uh, we'll catch you next time. See ya.